Welcome to our 10 tips to help you make sure that you get the best score you can in your IELTS writing test. And just to remind you, there are two tasks in the test. The first task requires you to describe or explain something in about 150 words. This is generally information that is presented to you in a chart or a diagram. And for the second test, you need to produce an essay of about 250 words. It is important to prepare well for your test. And this means getting lots of writing practice. You need to write around 150 words for task one and 250 words for task two. So uh, make sure that you know what 150 and 250 words written in your own handwriting looks like and how much space it takes up. As part of your preparation, take these sample tests which you can find on the IELTS website. Reading a lot is also very useful preparation for the writing test. Read different styles of written English. For example, newspapers, blog articles, fiction, even emails from native English-speaking colleagues to just see and, and understand how they present information. Read the IELTS information provided on the ulearn.education and ielts.org websites. Also have a look at takeielts.britishcouncil.org and the cambridgeenglish.org websites. Get as much information as you can about IELTS and then do the practice tests on the IELTS.org website. In general, we find that students struggle more with the writing tests than they do with the other IELTS tests. And this is really because we get, we get much less practice writing than we do speaking, listening or reading. So practicing for the IELTS writing test is very important. We, re we recommend you complete some of the test papers which are on the IELTS website and then get somebody to check them for you so you can identify where you're going wrong and the areas that you need to improve. When you are practicing, it will help if you can try and create as best as you can the, the sort of conditions that you will be working under when you take your test. So don't have the TV turned on. Turn off your phone. Answer the questions within the time limit just like in the real test. Make sure you read the questions carefully and look for important keywords and instructions. For example, words like explain, or suggest, or say why. Make sure you are prepared and ready on the day of the test. Make sure you know where you need to go what time you need to be there and how you're going to get there. Get plenty of rest the night before and don't be late. <laughs> the, the very last thing you want is unnecessary extra stress on test day because you didn't manage your time properly. The first task is simply asking you to describe what you see. So you're not expected to give an opinion. If you have to describe a, perhaps a graph showing how global temperatures are increasing, then you're not expected to speculate on why this might be happening. Just simply describe what you see. Also, don't add in any information that isn't there. If the task is based around perhaps a diagram showing how to change a car wheel, <laughs> Don't start talking about stages that aren't shown in the diagram. Again, very simply, just describe what you see. Task two is where you can start to express your own ideas and opinions. You might be asked if you agree with or oppose an idea, and then explain why you have expressed that opinion. You need to express 
your ideas in a clear and an organised way. And we will explore this now in the next tip. You need to structure your answer so that you have an introduction, which gives a brief outline of the issue, the main body of your argument, where you present your arguments clearly and logically, and then a conclusion where you bring all these arguments together. Here is an example of how to start an answer to task two. Here is the question. Euthanasia or mercy killing has been a controversial issue for many years. Although many people are strongly against such a practice, there is a growing demand to have it legalised. How far do you agree with euthanasia being made legal? You could start your introduction to this task in this way. Over the last century, the clinically assisted death rate has surged, which has become an ethical issue for several reasons. In spite of considerable disapproval by some religious countries, as well as human rights organisations, a large number of terminally ill patients prefer mercy killing in order to end intolerable pain. I partly agree with this statement, but there should be consideration to the circumstances of mercy killing. So you have started off with a really nice summary of the issues and then concluded the paragraph by saying there should be consideration to the circumstances of mercy killing. So there you've now nicely set yourself up to expand on the main points of your argument. You will have a test paper and then a separate answer sheet. And the idea is that you work out your answers on the test paper and then transfer these answers to the answer sheet. So make sure that you leave enough time to do this when you have completed your test. Don't, don't rush this final stage because marks will be deducted if you make spelling or grammatical mistakes or if the examiner can't read some of your answers. Then, if you can, just leave a little bit of time at the end to finally check your answers. And don't just think about, is this answer right or is this answer wrong? But check if everything is spelt correctly. Make sure you've used apostrophes, capital letters and plurals correctly. You have 60 minutes to complete both tasks, which is about 20 minutes for task one and 40 minutes for task two, which includes the time you're going to need to transfer your answers to the answer sheet. Here is um, something to think about. Not an instruction, not, not a, a rule you have to follow, just something to think about. Some tutors advise you to complete task two first and then complete task one because task two takes twice as long and carries more marks. So if you did run out of time, it is perhaps better to run out of time on the lower scoring question rather than on the higher scoring task two. But there are no rules about this, just an approach for you to think about and something for you to do if you wish. Think about alternatives to the words which are in the question, that is, words with similar meanings. For example, the question might include the word annually. But you could then talk about things that happen every year, or once a year, or perhaps even every September. Also think carefully about numbers. A number may be written as 2246, but might be spoken as double two four six or even twenty two forty six. Keep focused throughout the test. <laughs> Don't let yourself get distracted or stressed out. You have an hour to complete the test, which is plenty of time if you manage that time properly and don't get distracted. I hope you found our tips useful 
and don't forget to watch our other videos for more tips to help you get the highest band you can in your other IELTS for UK VI academic tests.